Hello ladies, gentlemen, and deceased. My name is Emily Sophia and I'm going to be breaking down for you the latest and greatest of The Walking Dead, so spoiler alert. As we go forward, I will be bearing all in this review as per usual. And just to let you guys know, I won't be able to respond to YouTube comments directly for a time because I'm trying to work out the Google Plus insanity, which has utterly molested my existence. So at this point in time, I'm not set up to where I can do that because everything is a hot freaking mess. And speaking of hot freaking messes, let us discuss the events of this episode. And I will tell you this, I am completely, utterly, and in all ways relieved by the end of this episode and you may, you know, you may be looking at me a little bit puzzled and say, uh honey, well there's a whole nother thing coming, but the fact of the matter is that I personally am ready for a new tragedy, okay? I am ready for a fresh crisis because this madness of the plague and death and despair at the prison has just been freaking asphyxiating. And I think, and what this episode did was that it literally obliterated that particular uh, trauma and drama which was going on. And I just knew, I knew deep down in my soul that this was just not going to be sustainable and there was no way that they could, you know, keep this madness going this entire season or even up to the mid-season hiatus. There was just no way. I mean, is I was just, I mean, I was pretty much locked so hard in the fetal position that I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to uncurl myself and ever sit upright again, okay? I was afraid that I was going to have to go to posture school to relearn how to actually, like, you know, use my upper half and uncurl myself from the, the tight clenchedness of my stress. It was just, I mean, there's not much that I can really say about all the craziness that transpired other than that Herschel Green is a god among mere mortals, okay? His his sense of humor, his ability to just be so holy about everyone besides himself in the midst of all this craziness. And I mean, that man, he earned that manly cry that he had at the very end in his cell. You know, he's got his Bible out. He's finally in a place where it's done, you know? And everybody who has the, the plot immunity was able to survive the madness. I mean, it's just, it's just nuts, like, how everything progressed and how pretty much, um, Woodbury and every remnant of it besides our, our dearly beloved Bob and Tyrese and Sasha, I mean, they're gonzos, bye bye <laughs> I mean, is it just me or did they all, like, decide to just, like, die together in unison, you know, in the scene where... You know, everything hits the fan as it inevitably must because of doors left open. I mean, it's just it's just unfathomable to me how everything is able to spread like that. And yet, you know, we've always got to have a crazy fight scene. And really, the only way that can happen is by, you know, those little instances of negligence. Okay. But... Yeah, I mean, we're pretty much back to our core group just about. I mean, now that the madness is over, but I would prefer that, you know, I would prefer pretty much everyone being dead to this going on any further. I mean, you know, it's all fine and well, Daryl, Michonne, Tyrese, Bob, and the whole, you know, the whole freaking gang going on a little errand spree, but not that they exactly came in time but I mean what's good about this is that we'll get to you know return to our focus on the core characters and I was terrified because I mean the more screen time the more focus that Herschel got and everything he was doing all this talk of him being the hero and the sacrificial everything which he freaking is I mean this man he is unstoppable he doesn't even have his freaking leg and he is just like is running the show and 
so I was just, you know, it was like what I was talking about in some of my previous vlogs about how uh, characters who receive the most screen time are the most likely to have a certain curtain closed on their existence. That's just kind of the way that things work. So I was slightly terrified. I mean, I was just throwing my entire being against the reality that felt so imminent in every single instance where you know, I pretty much, like, whenever there is any crisis involving walkers being on the loose and in the perimeter, I am shrieking at the person who, you know, is is backing up or, like, whichever direction they're not looking in, I am shrieking at them to look in that direction. I mean, it's like, if you have not at this point, you know, evolved, if you, if natural selection has not given you eyes literally on the back of your head, <laughs> then I am concerned as hell for you, okay? And so I was just dying because I have trust issues with shows and I, you know, every time that Herschel wasn't looking one way, I would just be like, you know, taking my imaginary megaphone and screaming into my TV for him to turn around. I mean, it was just, it was balls. It was bananas. It was banana balls. I mean, just to, to put it in brief, um, <laughs> God, I'm just so relieved that this is over. I'm just like, can we all just, you know, hold hands, just walk away from this right now. I mean, just look for the exit sign. Let's just sort of snake our way out there and find a change of scenery. <laughs> Cause I mean, the prison just feels dead. I mean, even though by the end, you know, we're kind of, we see the greenery, the garden is still there magically. I mean, after the freaking zombie death horde came busting their way in, like heavy metal status. I mean, I, I was just sitting there like, this is so terrifyingly idyllic, like, everything's fine. It's like everyone just kind of wakes up from this wild dream. Like, I had this dream last night. You did? I had that same dream. And, you know, it's like everyone's just kind of like, hey, you know, let's bust open the pea pod and eat some peas. <laughs> I must say that this is a very, you know, this is a good episode for bonding between uh, the Grimes guys, you know, father and son. And I just love the moment when they're just freaking taking out the entire invasion, <laughs> like, single-handedly, they just, I, I don't know how they did <laughs> there, there is absolutely no way that they could have pulled that on their own, but they did. And there's one moment where Rick just kind of pulls back and looks at his son like, damn, he's got skills. <laughs> I mean, that they do. I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. They I don't know if they found some magical way to clone themselves whilst the camera was away and they just sort of made quick work of the mob, but I would, you know, I would pretty much hire them for, for any crisis related to, you know, things coming in droves because apparently that, that ain't no thing to them. <laughs> I mean, it was just as unrealistic and ridiculous as that felt. It was incredibly cathartic for me, and I honestly didn't mind because I was just so ready for this to be done. I had flashbacks to the end of season two when, you know, um, the, the Greens farm was going down into the pit of Hades, and it was just getting taken over completely and utterly. I was just kind of thinking back to that time, and, you know, surprisingly, like, everything kind of worked out, sort of a little bit I I mean I'm I'm honestly amazed I knew coming into this episode it would either be one of two things and I was originally thinking that it would be the first thing which was that somebody was gonna die somebody of, of import particularly or number two the governor was going to weasel his way back onto the scene and as it turns out we got the ladder which i was i was just like jumping with glee <laughs> i'm so freaking excited for him to be back and you're you know i know that 
weeks from now I am going to be eating my words like nobody's business but as for now you know I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy the cooking and once I have to engorge myself <laughs> on the, um, the testimony of excitement that I'm giving right now then I'll take it you know as long as it's not another freaking plague because that draws the line for me that was the subject of legitimate nightmares like, that to me is even more catastrophic than the zombie apocalypse, in a sense. I mean, it's just a double-edged sword. Because it's like, not only, you know, is the fact of the matter that once you die, you turn. It's like, hey, like, you are being made dead. There's literally nothing you can do. You know, there's no way to die of the natural causes of life and crap. But... You know, so I'm just so ready to put this behind us. I mean, I felt so ridiculous because I just wanted everyone eradicated. And by everyone, I mean I'm talking about all the, the loose hanging ends that was everyone pretty much infected by the plague. I'm like, I am willing to sacrifice just about anybody and everybody just to be done with this, just to be done, just to be able to move on to, you know, a new sort of crisis, which, you know, be careful what you wish for, because you just might get it, and I done got Christmas early, okay, so we'll see what becomes of that exactly, but um, a few more things I will say, again, I love the crap out of Herschel, he had so many glorious moments in this episode, I mean, the, the uh, English major in me was very pleased by his references, you know, he's talking about Tom Sawyer and John Steinbeck and, you know, he's just trying to keep, he's trying to keep the arts alive in a time that's not exactly, you know, conducive to their growth. And, uh, you know, when he's talking about having Spaghetti Tuesdays on Wednesdays, I think, I think I'm gonna have to take him up on that. I think I just might have to make that my personal ritual as well, just to celebrate the fact that he is alive. <laughs> You know, and, uh, and just his spirit, his spirit, his spirit is as resilient as all get out. He is platinum, he is diamond, he is, he is titanium, in the words of Saya, Sia, however you pronounce her name. <laughs> I mean, I could just, I could just see her shoulders being like, I am titanium, you know, he, he is titanium with a beard that is rather majestical. I mean, I just, I appreciate him so unfathomably much. Like, he is one of my favorite characters and just the moments that he got in this episode and the way that everything was handled and it was just incredible to me. And I'm happy that, you know, Rick and his son, they, you know, they're brushing shoulders, they're doing some teamwork, you know, they're taking out the entire freaking universe single-handedly and then snapping open some peas and calling it a day you know I mean what more can you ask for exactly <laughs> um yeah and we still got Sasha and we've still we still got Glenn I mean against all like every single odd odds it's we got the gang you know, <laughs> they're back completely in the spotlight. No nonsense. Well, I think that there is some nonsense to come. But so the two things that we are looking at um, as far as what's coming is the return of the governor and also what Daryl's going to do about Carol. And I knew, you know, as soon as Daryl came up asking about her, I was just like, all right, I knew that this was coming and you know, I told you guys last week that that was what was the most disconcerting to me about her going, you know, and we had the scene where Maggie very briefly tells uh, Rick that, you know, that was totally cool and she doesn't know if she would have been able to do it and and it's funny because Rick's like, you know, you could have done it, don't doubt yourself, but by that, it's kind of like, you know, by proxy, he's saying, like, don't doubt me <laughs> by saying that they're alike, you know, the logic flows. So we'll have to see what the fallout of this is going to be like uh, for Rick, because, you know, by doing what he did, Rick kind of spared 
Carol the potential wrath of Tyrese. But now he's probably going to be facing a different wrath entirely, which is embodied in the form of our darling dear Dixon. So, I mean, what do you guys think is going to transpire there? I could pitch you a few theories, and none of them particularly involve them becoming closer buddies. <laughs> but... I, I definitely fear for him in that because Carol has been a source of constancy for him pretty much since the get-go and the sacrifices that they have made for one another, the friendship, the more than friendship, whatever you want to call it that they have had. I mean, I don't think that he is going to take lightly her not being in the scene anymore, so... I wouldn't be surprised if he takes off again or if... I have no idea. I have no idea. I mean, originally I thought to myself, like, what would happen if Carol and the governor, like, found each other, you know, somewhere along the line, and I'm not so sure that that's going to happen now, per se, but, you know, anything is possible. Um, yeah, so that's, those are kind of the, the two main struggles, and then, of course, you know, everyone else is gonna, you know, find out about Carol once Daryl knows. And then we'll just kind of have to see how the cookie crumbles from there. And, uh, yeah. I'm just so ready. I'm so ready for the new age in this season. It's been a fantastic season so far. It's just that this particular brand of stress was really starting to grind me into the dust. I mean, like... <laughs> I could just feel myself being crushed into the oblivion and you know, like I, I'm excited to be pained in new ways I mean because I know that you know it's like they say in The Princess Bride life is pain and anybody who tells you anything different is trying to sell something so I resolved myself to the fact that there will be pain and pain in abundance. But the question is, of what nature? So, as for now, you know, we have slightly, you know, subdued the Walker population, courtesy of the Grimes guys. And the plague is effectively, you know, it's pretty much met its match in terms that the people who had it are slightly dead. I mean, literally, it's like they all just held hands together and they're like, okay, on the count of three, we all die and break out of our cells and it's just gonna be a party. Like, who's in? All right, cool. Three, two, one, they all fall down <laughs> and then just go. Just go again. Uh, that was just crazy to me. I mean, it's just so frustrating how it seems like that that whole thing that unfolded in the cell block could have been prevented and yet it had to happen i mean there was just really no way of prolonging things any further and you know the rest of the crew returned with some magical drugs i mean a slightly late christmas for them but you know all all's well that ends well but it's not over and as we saw from that little tiny dinky preview that they had at the very end of the episode of the governor well, he he's kind of in a sort of place where he's ready to set fire to the rain, and being that there is no rain, he's setting fire to just about everything else, and looking like a badass whilst it's doing so. So, I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think that he has any companions, any butlers, any, you know... Water boys. I mean, does he have any friends at this point in time? Or is anybody on his leash? Or is it just him kind of, you know, and, and can we say that he's been orchestrating something that we've seen happen in the season so far? Or is he just kind of coming up as, you know, the, the devil in the details? Like, it's hard to say because I've kind of held to the theory that he's been involved in some kind of conspiracy. Um, and the way, the way that it it seems is that, you know, as the camera's panning off and we see him, like, you know, George of the Jungle, just kind of hanging <laughs> hanging in the bushes and watching everything, it's almost like, well, that didn't exactly go according to plan, but, you know, or, so it's like, can it be said that he was part of the plan? I mean, we know that somebody was feeding the walkers, so 
Is it that he has been the delinquent zookeeper who's been, you know, contributing to this insanity, just trying to squeeze lemon juice in the gaping cut of the existence of the prison group? I mean, I'm just really excited to see where this goes, and the season is definitely about to change completely and utterly, and being that the writing has been so tight and awesome in the season so far, I'm really excited to see just how his character is handled and, you know, if we're going to get any flashbacks or, you know, just how things are going to transpire. I'm, I'm really excited for it. And despite all the insanities and things that irked me to no end in this episode, I mean, it was all a necessary part of tearing down the story and, you know, quite literally burning the path, you know, to create the way for something new. And that's what we need just about now. Um, other thoughts? Yeah, so we pretty much have the main group, except for a couple of the other new figures. And I'm trying to remember the younger girl's name, uh, Little Miss Blondie. Uh, you know, looks like Carl might have a lady friend. I mean, their Bethany was sort of... She wasn't in this episode at all, actually. I mean, she's, she's just off, like, she just has Judith somewhere. And I mean, I think it makes sense that she didn't show up because, like, you don't exactly want to go running with Fist of Fury into a situation like that, you know, toting a little, a little nugget of a child. So, I mean, it's good that she was out of the fray and, you know, she continues to be a part of things as Rick frantically asks about her. I mean, she's not a non-factor. It's just that she couldn't really be there at this point in time. So what remains yet to be seen is what the fallout of Carol's exile is going to spell out for the group if there's going to be, you know, dissent from within. And then how the governor comes into play with the rest of that. But I'm excited. I'm just so excited for everything to be different because I have been dying and there's just no use in trying to think about everything that happened because it's a new day. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that beautiful song. Um, I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching my reviews as much as ever. You guys are marvelous in the best of ways. Share with me all of your thoughts and theories and I will read them and figure out if I can find a way to reply um, in the midst of insanities with Google taking over the freaking world. So, that, that being said, um, all hail Herschel. Okay, I, I think I'm gonna get that on a t-shirt, which will then become a tattoo, which will then, I mean, I just, I feel like I need that written into the fiber of my being because I do wholeheartedly believe that Herschel is better than most human beings in the planet. Um, I mean, I'm just saying, Herschel 2016, I mean, come next election cycle, I know who I'm writing in, and uh, I've, I've got a good feeling about the political climate of the future, because uh, that I think he is just about what we need right now. I can see it, I can see it, so. Yeah, everything is kind of in this positive lull as everyone awakes from the horrible nightmare of death, as am I, until, you know, certain, uh, certain guy missing a certain eye and, um, certain empathy for humankind comes into the picture, so, but I like the governor as an evil dude, I don't know, I, I like it, I'm, I'm ready for this. I'm, I'm quite ready. So, take care, y'all, and I'll be back before you know it. Also, don't forget to watch my review of Thor The Dark World, which I, I saw that opening night, and it was fantastic, and I'd love to hear more of your thoughts on that. So, talk heroes and life and death and every pretty little thing in between. Take care, you guys.